Water is liquid. Air is a gas. Earth is solid. But what, what is fire? It takes up 99.999% of the visible universe, but most people are still unaware of the full state of matter that is plasma. So what is plasma and why is it so special? A plasma is achieved when a gas has enough energy for its electrons to break free from but still travel with their nuclei. There are a number of reasons as to why plasma is so intriguing to us all. Plasma is made up of ions, which are electrically charged particles. However, it has no net charge since the charges cancel each other out. Being made from ions, it is also known as ionized gas. This means that unlike solids, liquids or gases, plasma responds to and produces its own electric and magnetic fields. The ions in the plasma vibrate extremely fast. This is why it is also really, really, really hot. I mean, take the sun for instance. It's 93 million miles away from us and it still keeps us warm. You can actually see plasma as it contains photons and thus it gives off different colors of light based on the substance it is and the temperature of the plasma. For example, oxygen is pale yellow, nitrogen goes from red to yellow, hydrogen is pink and argon is dark violet. The sun is the biggest piece of plasma closest to us. In fact, all stars, lightning bolts, blinking neon signs, northern lights and even fire are all classified as types of plasma, even though it's still debated whether or not fire is really a plasma. You're probably thinking that aside from lighting something on fire, plasma is really hard to make. But don't worry, science is easy and fun. There are two ways one can make plasma. You could heat up a gas to a high enough temperature for the particles to vibrate so much that they collide with each other and knock the electrons out of their orbits. The amount of heat energy that needs to be supplied to create the plasma depends on the substance itself. For example, to turn water into plasma would take about 11,800 degrees Celsius of heat, which is really, really hot. This is literally how the sun gets its plasma. The incredible amounts of heat rip the electrons from the nuclei of the hydrogen and helium atoms, which in turn gives plants the energy they need to photosynthesize and produce oxygen, which is why you're still alive and watching this video. Another way to go about it is to subject the gas to some high voltage electricity. In this case, the electrons are moving at high speeds as the higher the voltage, the faster the electrons travel. They then collide with the atoms of the gas and knock the other electrons out of orbit yet again creating plasma. This is practically what you see happening in those bright and cheesy neon signs every now and then. Plasma is so hot that it is also used as plasma torches to cut metals in metalwork factories, so be sure not to get too close or else you'll be toast. On the topic of food, plasmas are used to make that thin protective layer that keeps the oxygen and water out, making your chips salt free and taste wonderful. Guess what plasma TV is used? Plasma TVs work with the plasma lighting up through a color grid of pixels to create the fully colored moving images of Tony Stark in his Iron Man suit zipping through the sky. Speaking of Iron Man, all those bright beams of light from his hands, feet and chest that he uses to blast all the bad guys off their feet and to fly off of the ground with immense force are simply beams of plasma from plasma vessels. That brings us to rocket engines. Yes, there are plasma propelled rocket engines out there such as the Vasmir engine. So let's take a look at the vast mirror engine one, shall we? I got this image straight from Wikipedia and it's pretty simple to understand. First, the neutral non-ionized gas is injected into the engine. The next step is where the gas actually turns to plasma. The helicon coupler induces the low frequency helicon wave through radio frequency heating into the gas. This is basically science for it gets heated up to form plasma. After that, the superconductor generates a magnetic field which confines plasma because we all know how plasma responds to magnetic fields. This increases the pressure of the ions. Imagine it like putting 100 people on steroids into one room closet. Next, the ICH coupler, or ion cyclotron heating coupler, heats the plasma up to around 1 million degrees Kelvin, roughly 600,000 degrees Celsius. This further excites the ions, which means they vibrate faster and faster. And finally, the plasma is let out of the back where the magnetic nozzle gives it a directed flow and thus pushes or better propels the rocket forward. 
you might ask, hey, plasma is used to cut metal, and rockets are made out of metal, so why doesn't the plasma end up making the whole engine explode? Well, Einstein, as well as superconductor, there are other sets of magnetic coils around the engine that can find the plasma and keep it from actually touching the system. So you can imagine that it literally just passes right through a tunnel with all the magnetic fields working together to keep the plasma from damaging the entire engine itself. The plasma propelled engine does have its advantages as spacecraft equipped with the engine travel much further with the given amount of fuel, making them highly efficient. They are also much faster and lastly they are much more cheaper. So the next time the teacher says that there are only three states of matter, be sure to show them this video and prove them wrong. Thanks for watching this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.